Hi guys! So how are you doing today? Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, today is episode 9 of my Inspirations podcast. So it's a podcast dedicated to knitting and yarn dyeing and I'm very happy to be back with you for another episode. So if you're new to the podcast, thank you so much uh, for checking me out. I hope you will like the podcast. Um, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. How are you doing? <laughs> Okay, so um, this week we're going to talk about uh, two bases in the shop, Stelina versus Lurex fingering. Um, then I will be uh, talking about uh, the way the shop works in terms of organization, shipping and things like that. Um, next, I'm going to share a bit about my works in progress. And last, I'm going to share with you what's new in the shop. Um, I'm going to, sh uh, to actually show you uh, the new Emmable goodies that are in the shop, that have been in the shop for a week now, and um, the new yarn in the shop. So that's the program for today. Uh, if you click on uh, the plus uh, just below the screen, you will find uh, the notes of the episode, so all the useful links. The most useful link is the link to my Etsy shop to buy the yarn and the goodies. <laughs> And the other most useful link is the newsletter. So the newsletter is sent once a week uh, on Mondays at 5 p.m. Paris time. Um, the podcast goes live uh, at the same time and uh, the shop is updated once a week at the same time. So everything on Monday at 5 p.m. Paris time. Um, <clears throat> what else? Yes, there is an ongoing call, so a monthly ongoing call uh, at Tricot Stitch. So uh, the <coughs> principle is to share a Tricot Stitch project. So it can be yarn, it can be um, pattern, can be both. And you can play along uh, on Instagram with this hashtag and <coughs> or as you wish on Ravelry in the in the group. So the links are in the show notes. Um, the price, uh, there will be uh, one knitter uh, randomly picked up at the beginning of next month. And the price for the month is one skin of the month colorway for the sock knitters and manac. So this month, the colorway is lucky and you can choose the base you want it on. Um, that's it. <laughs> so don't hesitate to play. You can also, um, you know, tag your publication on Instagram with Tricot Stitch. I love to browse that, that hashtag. Um, and that's it, <laughs> basically. So that's for the general information. Now I'm going to dive into uh, the first topic. That's a question I've been asked a lot uh, and that I usually, I usually have the question at least twice or th three times a week. It's what's the difference between uh, Lurex fingering here and Stelina fingering? Because I have two bases in the shop with sparkle I love yarn with sparkle and I wanted to offer you guys two options but uh, you often get confused because you don't know what, why there is two and what, what basically is the difference. So I'd say that the first difference is the way the yarn is spun because it's, uh, it's exactly the same content. It's 75% uh, Merinos Superwash Merino. Uh, for the Lurex it's extra fine superwash merino, 20% nylon and 5% uh, either lurex for the lurex fingering or 5% stellina for the stellina fingering. So uh, it means yarn content is basically the same. The uh, very big difference between the two is the way the yarn is spun at the mill. So if you look just uh, two strands, for example, here and there, you can see one is quite skinny, the Stelina here is quite skinny, whereas the uh, Lurex is plump and kind of, you know, yeah, it's a plump yarn. 
Lurex gets often mistaken with a sport weight, even a DK weight, uh, because it's so lofty and full of air. So Stellina is actually a two-ply yarn, uh, very dense, uh, very sleek, uh, with beautiful drape, and um, it's, it has a very worsted spun feel to it. So um, yeah, it's a yarn that I love to knit lace uh, or for garments for which I don't need uh, it to be super warm. I knitted a rocket tee out of this by Tanis Lavalle out of this base and it's perfect for that. Uh, if you want a bit of drape as well, it's great. It's not so good for textured knitting like uh, cables or such. It's not the best option. It would work, but it's not your best option. Um, yeah, so that's for the Stellina. On the other hand, um, the Lurex, so it's much plumpier. <laughs> it's very plump. Um, this is, to me, it reminds me to, uh, uh, it reminds me of a uh, woolen spun kind of yarn. There is a much more woolly feel to it. It's a three-ply yarn, so it's perfect to show off your textures. Uh, textured knitting, cables will be perfect. Um, it's super airy, super lofty. There is a lot of air trapped in there. So it's very warm. Um, it's perfect if you wish to knit a bit of fancy color work. Uh, with a bit of with a bit of sparkle, for example, I think that yarn has more teeth than uh, the Stellina. It's still very soft to the touch. So, yeah, to me the difference between Stellina and Lurex is first and foremost that the the yarn uh, ply structure <coughs> and the uh, spinning type, the spinning style. Then another difference is that uh, the Lurex, which is basically the sparkle, is much more visible in the uh, Lurex fingering, whereas the Stellina is very discreet. I, it's just a hint of a sparkle, and here it's much more, yeah, much more present. So that's the other difference. Uh, sparkle here on Lurex fingering, it's yeah, you see it much clearly. This on Stellina, Golden Sparkle, is the base uh, that I ha usually have in the shop. It's more discreet. Uh, if you want a bit of sparkle, but not too much, nothing too much. And uh, I think I shared with you guys two episodes ago that my supplier for Stellina had a... Uh, a, uh, sh well, they were out of stock for the golden Stellina. And the thing with Stellina is you have different colors of Stellina. You have gold Stellina, you have silver Stellina, and you have bronze Stellina. So uh, my supplier offered me to get some silver Stellina instead of the gold one that I usually carry in the shop. And uh, I just double checked that the yarn uh, ply structure was the same. It's exactly the same base, the same yarn plies, same number of plies and the same spinning style. Uh, it's just the uh, color of the Stellina that differs. So I said, yes, no problem. This is the two uh, side by side, um, golden Stellina and silver Stellina. And you can see it's very, very light. Yeah, I mean, it's not very obvious that both are different. <laughs> I mean, not obvious at all, but yeah. So that's why I accept, I, I, I agreed actually to replace uh, the, the base that was out of stock with the uh, Stellina with silver sparkle instead of gold sparkle. Um, to me, really, the difference is not very obvious. So that's perfect. So that's it for the difference. I hope it clarifies things for you. If you want more information on the bases, I'm working on the English version of the bases page that is already available in French uh, on my website. So if you um, want to have some information in French, 
you can access um, the uh, page on the basis via tricoestitch.com, boutique and bases. Uh, and I'm working on the English translation very soon, I hope. <laughs> okay, next uh, subject I wanted to talk to you about. So, yeah, for the first time ever, last this week, because today is Saturday the 20th of March, um, I had a not so quite exchange with a client, uh, with a customer in my shop. And uh, I, I want to talk to you uh, about that because I think it's, uh, for me, it's uh, a good way to remind you how the, the shop works, uh, just so that you don't have any surprise when you order and you, you know how everything works. And also to uh, show boundaries, um, <laughs> because I think it's important. It, it's uh, very important when you are working solo, like I do, um, to have boundaries and to enforce your boundaries. Because, uh, yes, it's really not very often, I, I'd say that 99.9% of the time, uh, my customers are, are just lovely persons, very patient, very understanding because, I mean, life happens and uh, I'm really doing my best uh, to meet the uh, shipping dates indicated in Etsy and uh, and uh, I'm super available uh, via m the message uh, box on Etsy uh, but yeah sometimes it's just not enough and you have to set boundaries so <clears throat> uh, just so you know how the shop works. Actually, I have two dyeing sessions per week um, and two uh, shipping days per week. Both are working hand in hand. I dye the yarn, <laughs> I scan up the yarn, I label the yarn, I pack your, in your orders and the, the yarn goes in the shop once a week on Mondays and then I pack your orders and uh, the orders go uh, out of the door twice a week on Wednesdays and on Fridays. So that means that if you order something on a Friday when I've already gone to the post office, which is actually, uh, if it's later than really early morning on Friday, I will already have packed everything and gone to the post office on Fridays. So uh, it means that your order will not ship until the next Wednesday. So I know this could be a long time, uh, moreover, if the article is ready to ship. I completely understand. But that's the way I'm, I'm, I'm functioning. That's the way the shop is working. And uh, that's why the shipping, um, shipping delay in the, in the shop is three to five days for every order that is, that is ready to ship. That's to include the fact that if you sh you order something on a Friday, it won't ship until the next Wednesday. But I mean, that's available information. I'm not um, hiding this information. This is everywhere. This is in the show notes. This is uh, on the listings. This is everywhere. And this is the way the shop works because on Mondays I'm updating the shop. On Tuesdays, I'm dyeing yarn and uh, pre I'm preparing orders that ship the next day on Wednesdays. On Thursday, I'm uh, again dyeing and uh, preparing orders that I've occurred uh, during the rest of the week and shipping them on the next day on the Friday. So that's how it works. And uh, it took me a lot of time to, uh, you know, find an organization that works both for the shop and for me personally because I uh, I have four kids and the one of the reasons that I wanted to become an entrepreneur and work for myself, be self-employed, is to, I, I wanted to have the flexibility to take care of my family and uh, just, you know, call the cars and uh, and be able to uh, take some time to take the kids to the doctor appointment or just, you know, to organize my time around the, uh, the shop and the kids and uh, not in this order, <laughs> actually. 
<laughs> family first. Um, yeah, that, that was really important to me. And this is why the shop also works ha works on, on uh, Wednesday, for example. I'm working only on the, in the mornings because I want to have some uh, available time to spend some time with the kids. I don't work on weekends unless there is a lot of work to be done. And uh, But when I can avoid it, I avoid it because, yeah, this is what motivated my choice of being self-employed with all the, the unknown and all the stress that comes with this position. But I wanted the flexibility to be able to manage my time and to be able to look after my family uh, as, uh, as well as I could. Okay, so this is how the shop works. So this client uh, bought something on, fri on a Friday, didn't read the listing didn't receive, uh, didn't know that her order was to be shipped on Wednesday. And because I'm a uh, one woman, I'm a one woman show with kiddos, sometimes uh, the, the shipping can be pushed back one or two days. And that what happened uh, this week, actually, the shipping was pushed from Wednesday to everything went out on Friday. So the, the order that were to ship on Wednesdays were shipped only on Fridays. And uh, because of doctor appointments on Wednesday and Thursday and uh, well, life happens. And I mean, I get it, it's long. Okay, I just, I completely get it. Uh, I'm the first to apologize. I'm the first to let her know that when the order will ship, and I mean, if the tone of the message is, is nice enough, <laughs> I won't get pissed. I mean, it's your complete right to come up to me and say, hey, I'm just wondering uh, if uh, why my order hasn't shipped. It was supposed to ship yesterday. Is everything okay? Is there a problem with my order? I will reply to you immediately or very quickly because I know you want a, a speedy answer in those in those distances and I will let you know that yeah I'm very sorry about that your order will ship tomorrow uh, there was an unplanned thing happened in my life and I couldn't take your order as planned in the to the to the shop office to the post office so very nice very yeah but that was not the case this week that client va was very pissed up from the beginning very rough from the beginning and i tried to you know stay very professional and uh, let her know that i was sorry that her order was one day late and uh, i would do my best and it would ship the day after and uh, yeah that was not enough and and the problem actually was not that her order was one day late. The, the problem was that she had not read the shipping policy of the shop and uh, to her it should have. To her, I think I was on a uh, ship the same day policy, but it's not feasible for me. It's absolutely not feasible at the time at the time being to to be on a ship the same day policy. It's not working. I mean, I can't. So uh so the turn was not very nice and what actually completely pushed my buttons was that she told me she shopped at indie dyers all the time and i was the only one to be so slow with such a bad communication and uh and yeah why couldn't i do like the others and yeah that was going over the boundaries for me because i mean what does she know about me or the others uh she doesn't know how we work what our matter or, or what our equi equipment is how what our organization is what our family situation is i mean all that in a perfect world wouldn't have any consequence on on the work side of our business but it does because we are working usually for a lot of us from home or I mean we have a studio but uh, we also we are we're actually one woman show so yeah <laughs> if my kid is sick I have to take him or her to the doctor it will have an impact on my work schedule because I'm actually forced to do that on my work schedule and yeah <laughs> 
so I just wanted to clarify that for you guys. I wanted to encourage you to read the listings and to make sure you are comfortable with the shipping uh, time frame of the shop. Um, again, shipping is on Wednesdays and Fridays. I don't have the means for the time being to let 40 different people know at the same time that their order will be delayed by one day. Uh, also, even if I'm doing my ultra best to uh, ship everything in time, I also know that it, a yarn late for a day or two is not, I mean, it's not such a big deal unless there is a situation on your side that makes it a big deal. In this case, don't hesitate to let me know if it's a, if it's uh, in the, if it's a timing is really sensitive for you. Uh, you should let me know, and you should uh, maybe ask me in advance if everything will be okay if you are really short on time, because uh, maybe sometimes I will tell you no, <laughs> it's not going to work because I won't be able to meet your deadline or there is too much, you know, too much uh, uncertainties uh, because of the shipping, uh, shipping, usual shipping delays or I don't know. So yeah, I, I, I think that one of the big advantages of uh, shopping at an indie day is also to be able to be in touch with the shop owner very closely and you definitely should take advantage of that. <laughs> Okay, so because that person was, I, I think, uh, her harsh words were uncalled for and uh, she completely uh, overcome my boundaries, I decided to cancel and refund her order uh, because I do not wish to have people like that as my clients. So she was very pissed off very pissed off and she was even more inappropriate in her cho choosing of words. She got personal, she got mean. Uh, I don't know if when you can block somebody on Etsy but if I could I do I would do that and yeah so I won't say I'm not, I mean it hurts a bit. <laughs> because I really tried to be to accommodate and I apologized several times and it was never enough so uh, yeah it hurts it hurts a bit I won't lie but uh, I think it's really important to set boundaries and to identify what you want and what you don't want want and I really don't want to uh, be uh, engaging with people like this on this basis and on this kind of tone and uh, and overall I mean you know the the, the uh, idea that I paid so I can just do what Whatever I want with you. <laughs> so I don't agree. I don't agree. So it's just so you know because she threatened to, uh, you know, uh, take action against me on Etsy. <clears throat> uh, it's my right to refund your order, well, to refund an order and to refuse a, a, a sale. So it, I mean, you can do that as an Etsy shop owner. Uh, you don't have to justify yourself. Uh, I mean, I could, but I don't. Yeah. So there is there was no basis for report to to report anything. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, share that with you guys because I it's really important to me that you know how the shop works you are not surprised because sometimes it can take up to five days for your order to ship um, it happens it happens I mean it can take for orders <laughs> that are passed on the Thursday you will ship the day after sometimes if it's early on a Friday morning it will ship on, ship on the same day but yeah because it's only two uh, post office days a week uh, sometimes it can go up to five days so that's it <laughs> sorry for the rant it's quite um, it's quite good also to be able to you know explain things things are not always 
you know, I know I'm I'm really saying a lot that I'm super happy and I, yeah, I'm really super happy a lot of most of the times, but sometimes things are not so fine. So I think it's important to be able to talk with you guys of all that. It's also part of the life of a shop owner, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm not. What I'm not asking, though, I, I'm not asking for your, you know, uh, comments like, oh, what an awful person, or yeah, it's not constructive, I don't want that. I, I just wanted to uh, take the opportunity to remind, to, to remind or explain you how the shop works and how it is uh, as a, yeah, solo entrepreneur, solo mompreneur, uh, how it is behind the scenes, um, because organization and meeting the deadlines is really crucial for me I'm working really hard uh, for that I'm I'm learning every day I'm not perfect I'm learning every day I'm doing my super very best <laughs> and yeah okay so now knitting <clears throat> um, I knitted a bit on my Westfield Wanderer I'm going to show it to you guys but uh, be warned it's not head turning it's really soft <laughs> not much progress here uh, just uh, this row of eyelets which gives it its beautiful which accentuates I think the beautiful wavy shape of the border and actually yesterday I watched something on Netflix I had enough energy to watch something uh, in the evening which I hadn't had in I think two weeks and uh, it was The Dig. It was a wonderful. Uh, I'd love to find something in my garden <laughs> that is like a thousand years old. <laughs> well, if you have not seen it, I won't spoil you, but it's a great movie. It's a great movie. I love this. So I knitted on that, uh, watching The Dig, and it's actually the perfect project to knit in front of TV. Perfect. Uh, I think if I have more energy at night and that I keep watching a movie from time to time, I might even manage to meet my ob web gauge objective. Maybe. So that's the first project on which I worked this week. I made very little progress on my Amber Wings socks because I, yeah, I worked on other projects. But I think I will manage to finish this sock for March, at least. So this is the Rusimin, the Estonian Inlet Technique, and this is the sock, and this is a lucky colorway, and this is the uh, colorway for March for the sock knitters on Manak. So I'm really enjoying this colorway. I just wish I would hit. I just want to see the speckles, the rainbow speckles. I don't see them yet, but I want to see them. I hope I see them soon, because. Um, Oh, I have a marker that is... Yes, you see, there is a bit of here of rainbow speckles, but I want to see them on my sock, <laughs> not just on the on the bow. <laughs> okay, so yes, small progress on the umber wings, on the umber wing socks. Um, last weekend, I made some progress on my embarkation uh, mystery call by Cindy Garland so that's a mystery call if you don't want to be spoiled look away for a few minutes so I finished the beautiful uh, lace pi pattern here with the beads and then it's uh, there is another transition here and then we are back to you uh, I think the same kind of uh, which is very pretty uh, same kind of stripey section here is being repeated here so yeah i'm going to work on that this weekend um in terms of books i'm a bit on hold with death on the nile because i love i've just i mean i don't know where i've been the past 20 years i'm a lover of everything monsters uh, in literature, movies, series. I love a good m monster movie and a good monster book and I don't know why I hadn't, I had never read a book by Preston and Child. Uh, 
I've just stumbled upon the uh, Pendergast series. There are 18 books in the Pendergast series of books. And I mean, uh, I've just read the first two ones, Relic. I mean, I remember the film from 1997. Uh, I, I read Relic, which was great. I read uh, Reliquary, the second book in the, in the series, which was even better. <laughs> And I've just started the Cabinet of Curiosities. So I'm going to knit on that while listening to Cabinet of Curiosities by Preston and Child. And I've got, I'm really happy I found a um, series of books with monsters. A lot of, you know, thrilling moments. A bit of gore, but not too much. And, mm, yeah, just good books. Really good books. Um, the last project I wanted to show you is that baby, the Chal Réconfort, the Réconfort Shawl. So I just wanted to show you my progress. Um, there are four lacy sections in that uh, big boy and five garter stitch sections. So I'm, I've completely completed um, the first two lace sections and I'm on the third uh, garter stitch section, so I'm making progress. I've knitted on that on Wednesday. Wednesday was not a good day. I wasn't very, I wasn't feeling very well. I had a tummy ache and I actually spent the whole morning on the couch with the kids knitting on this baby. And uh, later in the day, I was feeling better. I had the appointment for uh, my eldest, Ambre. And uh, I started on preparing all the orders. Uh, well, continued preparing all the orders. And that's mainly why it didn't ship on Wednesday because yeah, I was under the weather. <laughs> And um, so, yeah, good progress on this one. And it should be, I mean, I'm on track. So uh, the um, date I announced last week of a publishing date in sometime in autumn, beginning of autumn 2021, is still holds. I mean, there's a lot of time. <laughs> and so that enables me to um, show you uh, the new Emmable goodies in the shop. Why is it the perfect transition? Because this baby sleeps in this bag, which is the new Emmaville bag uh, that I have, that I, that I had in the shop because guys, you loved it so much, it's already gone. And it actually was gone on Monday evening. <laughs> but I'm so happy that you like it because I loved, uh, I love that series. I really love uh, the blue of the sea of the sky and the contrast with the stripy red color of the interior. It's very roomy. It's a drawstring bag. It's perfect size. You can have a big shawl in there. You can have a sweater in there. You can, you know, I think I, I you can have up to 10 skins in there. It's very, really, very roomy, very big. Yeah, so one of the difficulties for me with Emma Ball is to... Uh, I don't have a crystal ball and I don't know in advance what you are going to love and what you are going to just like, what is going to stay in the shop for a few weeks or what is going to stay in the shop for a few minutes. So uh, I know that you guys love that. So what I decided to do for... not for the smaller things, because I mean, there is no stocking problem for the smallest items but for the biggest items like this one or the most expensive ones um, I'm going to open a list of pre-orders uh, via messaging on Etsy so if you basically if you want some one like this just drop me a message on Etsy and I will you will be put on a pre-order list I'm not going to bill you straight away because I'm not uh, I mean, on pre-orders, I, I have a very strict policy of, um, you know, billing you only when I have the goods um, with me. 
So I will never, never cash, on, cash in on pre-orders when I don't have the yarn, for example, or when I don't have the dye pad, or when I don't have the goods. So, but what I can do is put your name on the list of pre-orders, it will help me uh, you know, buy the right amount of bags, for example. And so I'm going to buy everything for the pre-orders plus a bit of a margin for to, put, to be put in the shop. Uh, but yeah, it will help me to better, you know, estimate the quantity uh, that I need to buy uh, with Amable just to be able to satisfy uh, the... Um, your crave <laughs> your crave for this type of products so don't hesitate to drop me a message uh, that works for the biggest items so that the big project bag um, if you see something what you can do uh, is actually if you didn't watch last week's episode you can just uh, have a quick watch of the aimable section of this episode because I'm actually showing you um, the catalogue of aimable and so uh, if you see something that you like and then that, that you'd like to order like this kind of item which is a big bit bigger or the tote bags or that are not in the shop or mugs for example that works for mugs as well um you just drop me a message and then you will be put on a pre-orders list i will place my next next order in my bull order i think uh beginning of april end of the month end of march beginning of april and then when it's uh, available, I will uh, send you uh, a listing to be bought, uh, put in your basket and uh, to be paid. So yeah, don't hesitate to drop me a message uh, on Etsy to be put on the pre-orders list. So that's for this uh, under the sea uh, big drawstring bag. Mm. That works as well for all the other drawstring bags. So Willy Puffins, shipping sweaters, shipping sweaters is out of stock has been out of stock for a long time now but it's going to be back in stock very soon so shipping sweaters woolly puffins uh, stitched birdies will be available soon as well um, the knitters the knitters I told you I was not so enthusiastic about this series as for the others but uh, you were several to tell me that you loved them so I'm going to order some uh, so the knitters uh, for example uh, what else yeah just have a look at next you you know you can just click on the time code of the dedicated mobile section in the um, in in the last episode and you will see uh, what's available uh, to order yeah, I'm not ordering the whole range because it's big. <laughs> there is a lot of things. <laughs> okay, uh, the other things that are new in the shop, uh, aimable wise. So you just seen seen the big drawstring bag. There is also the big uh, zipped pouch and the little purse coordinated. So both have the uh, red and white stripy uh, lining. And they're gorgeous i love that series um i also took for the shop uh the the notebook so it's really lovely this is like this and it's lined all over with a bookmark um yeah in this series you also have the stickers I love the stickers and the bookmark, the magnetic bookmark. I'm using that. Uh, I'm, I'm using that in my own calendar. Well, I don't have a calendar per se, but I'm, you know, this is my planning for my week, and I, I put a bit of stickers. It's really lovely. I love that. Um okay so there is two different costas as well on the shop so anything that you there is much more than that in the shop but i'm not sh i'm showing you only the new things uh not the things that have been in the shop for quite a while now 
um, there is a new bookmark for the Stitch Birdies series. Lovely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm transitioning to the Stitched Birdies series. So this is these are the stickers for the Stitch Birdies. Um, there is also the, so the two boxes for the Stitch Birdies are back in stock, but there is a new little box as well with the bobbin. This is sliding like this. Um, in the Stitched Birdies series, there is two new canvas tote bags. So the first one says a stitch in time saves nine. It's lovely. And the second one is stitching is good for the soul. Just like knitting. <laughs> Okay, and I wanted to try another kind of uh, canvas bag, a one with a you know the um, stitched birdie uh, pattern printed all over. It's a bit more expensive because it's not the same. Um, it's not the same fabric. This one is a bit uh, waxy, a bit waxy. Um, the handles are, are a bit different as well. And it's bigger. There is, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the same width, but it's not the same height. Yeah, it's bigger. And it's printed all over and it's lovely. And I think the next order I'm going to take the same tote bag, but uh, in the Sea Life series. Um, then to stay in the birdies, so garden birds this time, there is a new coster in the shop. I mean those guys, those little guys are just lovely. So there was, this is not new, this was from the last, uh, it was already in the shop but uh, I wanted to show you again. I think I forgot it was already in the shop, that's the magnetic bookmark. <laughs> and new this time around is this Chabinet notebook. A lot of pages here. Format is A6. You have the lovely garden birds illustration. I love that little guy especially. With um, an elastic. And the interior is lined with a bookmark. It says on the catalogue that this is Amable personal favourite format for a notebook and she uses this one all the time <laughs> okay I'm just sitting on something very very soft and I think I'm oh. <laughs> I'm just you know sinking <laughs> um, the last uh, tote bag I wanted to share with you is the similar to um, shipping sweaters but uh, the name of the series is other is other woolies because you have llamas and alpacas uh, in there with i mean those guys have the sweetest expressions look at them and this one i mean so sweet so sweet there are coordinated markers with this series and there will be a drawstring bag as well in this series which looks gorgeous. I have not seen it in person yet, but uh, it looks very, very nice. Okay, um, so now I'm going to show you the yarn. There is a bit more yarn in the shop this week because I'm almost completely done. Sorry, something fell, something fell don't know where okay it's a mission for another time so I'm going to show you the yarn so new in the shop this week I dyed a couple of extra fine single uh, for the shop uh, those are new colorways no name yet as is a bit usual with me <laughs> 
they will have names one once then the shop on Monday so this is a beautiful pink with actually different shades of pink and the slightest hint of purple then you have this lovely uh, this is going to fall okay you have this lovely peachy colorway um, I might just call it that just peachy <laughs> it's lovely very light coral it's really just peachy and uh, that was on single as well and still on single you have this deep purple with some red undertones gorgeous color as well so that's for the single and next I have some sparkle for you guys this week so I have some oh, this is going to fall sorry <laughs> <coughs> I have some crazy witch on silvery Stellina I have some poison ivy on extra thin sock so that's a gorgeous mix of different greens with apple red sparkles I love that colorway poison ivy um, then I have three silver lining on extra pink sock and just saying I have the coordinated more and sock in the shop so if you want to knit a love knot you can um, then I prepared I know you love that I do too I prepared some kits some minis so that's a set of seven minis seven different colors um, you have there um, what, what have you have? What do you have? You have Obscuro, Halo, Jean Fetish, Chocolate Fudge, Chinon, uh, Soubois, and Ecorse. So I have three kits like this, plus, plus a few, you know. I will have a few non affected minis as well in the shop. And then I have three different shades of blue. I have Complètement Givré, which is the French for completely frozen. Super cold light blue and greys with blue speckles. I have Au Fond. A beautiful teal and sapphire blue mix. I really love that colorway. And the last color I want to share with you is Into the Night, which is a deep, very deep blue. Can you, does it? Yes, cool. So yes, a bit more yarn in the shop this week. Basically because I'm almost done with the pre-orders for the Sock Knitters Almanac. Yes, uh, I forgot. Uh, I will have a few ready to ship uh, Sock Knitters Almanac colorways uh, in the shop on Monday. Um, I will, on BFL, so I will have uh, Lueur. No, I will have Nuit d'hiver, Lueur and Lucky, which are the colorways for um, January, February and March available as ready to ship in the Almanac section of the shop on Monday. I don't have much. I think I have one Nuit d'hiver, three Lueur and one Lucky on, B on BFL uh, that are ready to ship. And that's it for this week. So uh, what's on the menu for me this week, this coming week? Uh, well, there is uh, the April colorway, 
of the Sucknesses of Manac that will be revealed in the next podcast on March the 29th. Um, what else? I'll have... Well, I have a few uh, a few um, personalized pre-orders to work on with some custom colorways. I'm dyeing, uh, oh, so, and I don't know if you know, but uh, yeah, I'm dyeing custom colorways. I mean, you can drop me a, a message telling me what you wish. Uh, you can share photos, you can share more than photos, you can share whatever you want that can show me exactly what you wish and I do my best to dye uh, the yarn of your dreams and that's it that's it for, for this week so thank you very much for staying with me with me until the end i wish you a lovely week and i'll see you next monday take care guys bye <laughs> <laughs>